The story of how Miami Vice came to be is like most everything in Hollywood. A little fact and a lot of fiction. Legend has it that then-NBC chief Brandon Tartikoff scribbled MTV Cops on a piece of paper, and from there, a series was born. Vice creator Anthony Yurkovich said the idea for the show did come in part from MTV and the way they were telling stories through music, and in part from a piece of paper, but not that one. Instead, it was a newspaper clipping, an article about the large amount of undeclared income in Dade County, Florida, that got him thinking that Miami and its underworld of under-the-table money had all the right elements of style, seediness, and sizzle for a great cop show. A lot of times in writing, particularly um, in a cop genre, the action is where the money is. So uh, you follow the money. And uh, it's cause and effect of all that cash. You've got episodes and episodes worth of uh, illegal activity. So where else can a big city player find a good time in a town like this? Everywhere. If Miami doesn't have it, nobody's thought of it yet. Yurkovich wanted his cops to work undercover, but he needed a way for them to blend in with the high-living lowlifes they were investigating. He got inspiration from a federal law that allows the government to seize any property used in a crime, even, say, a Ferrari sports car. And allowed me as a writer to create a couple characters who were cops, you know, making a measly 35 Gs a year, and give them access to all the toys they needed to pass as high-level players in the... Uh, you know, Miami underworld. I'm gonna be wearing an Armani blazer. You're gonna be wearing a wire. Gurkovich pitched his idea to NBC. A 15 minute pitch and I walked out of there with a, a put pilot uh, deal and um, went to work writing the show. The city of Miami, however, took a little longer to convince. The early 80s had been a turbulent time in Miami. Race riots, the nation's highest murder rate, rampant drug smuggling had all tarnished the city's once glowing image as a tropical paradise. City officials wanted to brighten its reputation and worried that a show called Miami Vice would bring the wrong kind of attention. They were horrified at the title. They were quite alarmed and uh, suggested to us some like terrible boring sort of chamber of commerce kind of titles like Miami-Dade County PD and, and things that were, um, you know, in a spirit of Miami boosterism. Uh, so we just stuck to our guns and Miami Vice it was. Yurkovich had to stick to his guns once again when it came to casting. Totally he wanted Don guy. Johnson to be Sonny Crockett. NBC wasn't thrilled Bridge. with the idea. They Don't explained to me that uh, Don had done six uh, failed NBC pilots before, and uh, they would, you know, just as soon have Don Ho or Don King play Crockett than Don Johnson. In fact, even though Don Johnson's name came up early on, casting director Bonnie Timmerman was sent on a hunt for a different Sonny Crockett. I was hired to give Don competition, and I brought in a lot of actors and. No one got the part. He got the part, and it was his. For the role of Tubbs, Yurkovich suggested Philip Michael Thomas. It was late in the casting process when Johnson and Thomas finally met. They told the story on NBC's Today Show in 1985. Uh, Philip and I had read with other people, mm -hmm. and as we were leaving, as the casting director for Universal stopped us and said, listen, well, we want uh, you guys to read with each other. But all things considered, I think we might have to consider some sort of temporary working relationship. They were a great couple on screen, and they worked. And that's what the magic is in casting. The rest of the cast was unique, too, reflecting Miami's diverse culture. For the first time in primetime, a substantial number of roles opened up to minority actors, playing good guys and bad. Raul. Miami Vice was new and fresh in other ways as well. This is how NBC promoted the show to its affiliates in 1984. The cop show just graduated to the 80s. The series heroes were a major departure from the touchy-feely type of characters Yurkovich says were big on TV up until then. I created Crockett and Tubbs as a reaction to uh, 
you know, that sort of uh, cloying pop humanism of the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, characters like Ed Asner and Lou Grant and the entire cast of MASH. Their outfits may have been full of color, but when it came to right and wrong, Crockett and Tubbs only saw black and white. You committed a felony. Now either play ball or do the time. By September 1984, everything was in place and ready to go. But NBC scheduled the show at 10 o'clock on Friday nights, back then a deadly time slot. We weren't uh, initially happy at all with a Friday time slot, you know. That's not a good time slot, typically. The show entered the night's lineup with low expectations. CBS had built a Friday night dynasty with Dallas and Falcon Crest. Besides, Vice had tested poorly in audience research, and Madison Avenue considered it the network's weakest link. After a strong pilot showing, the show sank to 41st in the ratings. It seemed that two pastel-colored cops might be quickly muted by the CBS Blue Bloods. I think we made an error in judgment here. The show made some adjustments and got more serious. Gone were comic elements like Crockett's pet alligator Elvis, and producers brought on actor Edward James Olmos, who replaced Gregory Sierra as the department lieutenant. Almost his Lieutenant Castillo could not have been more serious. Don't ever come up to my face like this again, detective. By the time summer reruns hit the air, it was clear that the cast, crew, and creators of Miami Vice had done their jobs. Things had turned around. The show was ranking among the top 20, and it was just starting to heat up. By the start of season two, Miami Vice had arrived. Other networks had look-alike shows, and as this segment taped by Michael Talbot for a local Miami station shows, it was almost impossible to find anyone watching the competition. Somebody, somebody's got to be watching Falcon Crest. All these people can't be watching Miami Vice. Miami Vice remained on the air for five seasons. The series that some thought didn't have a chance remains today one of television's most enduring favorites.